Hey, I'm here with my really good friend, Dave. Dave Adler, you've been in this circumstance, haven't you? What's going on? Well, you can see the smoke is up high and works its way down. And then you can see the fire in a couple other adjacent rooms there. Is the this realistic? Is this what it's like? Yeah, typically it's much smokier. The smoke is all the way down to the ground. But the firemen are looking and they're searching for victims. Wow. Wow. And you've been in, in hundreds of these kinds of scenarios, haven't you? Yes, I have. <laughs> well, for those of you who don't know my friend, my dear friend, Dave Adler, um, he really is a, he's humble, so he's going to get mad at me, but he really is a true life action hero. Uh, he's been in the fire service. He's been uh, doing paramedic and fire and emergency management things uh, really all over the country, I, even all over the world. And um, Dave, I'm just so honored uh, to have you. Your experience is second to none. Um, I Just folks, so you know, uh, Dave and I have done some, some training across corporate, across churches, and uh, Dave, by far, every time I hear him train on emergency management, how to respond to those crisis periods, I just learn something every single time, one fact, one nuance. And I think you're going to find Dave to be an incredibly helpful resource for you because, folks, I don't have to preach this gospel. It's getting crazier by the day. Um, and we tend to focus on active violence. And like a dear friend of ours says, you're more likely to get hit by lightning and to be in the middle of that. It doesn't mean we don't prepare for it, but fires like we just saw, earthquakes, floods, uh, all those things. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, if you're not prepared at from the very seconds that those things start, you're going to be in trouble. So Dave, um, just do me a favor, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. And I know you could go on cause you've done so much, but just give us a hint of, uh, kind of the things you've done. I spent 32 years in the fire service, urban search and rescue and, uh, another, you know, 15 years in emergency management and uh, disaster response, uh, across the nation and uh, presidentially declared disasters to local disasters with, you know, train wrecks and explosions and floods and tornadoes. And one of the most dangerous out there are fires in our homes. People wow. don't realize that smoke is the number one killer. It's not fire. You know, I was on an apartment fire where when we pulled up, we were looking down the hallway. We never saw any smoke. And there was a small fire in one apartment, and it had been burning all night long. Oh. Three adults and a baby died in that fire. Hmm. And they had been wandering around in that apartment, who knows, for hours maybe. And we could see their handprints on the walls. Their hands were on the windowsill and on the window. But the smoke and all the toxic gases affects the logical thinking part of your brain. And they didn't wow. know why they wanted to open up the window or how to open up the window. We found another victim right behind the door and right he was two inches away from safety. But he had his hand on the doorknob and he didn't wow. know how to open it or why to open it. And they did not have a smoke detector. One of the most dangerous kinds types of fires firefighters are in in the United States is a residential home. So many firefighters are injured in residential home fires. And it's very simple. Have a smoke detector. Practice a fire drill for your home. Everybody thinks it'll never happen to me. You know, in 32 years, I never met anybody that said, oh, my house is going to be on fire, or I'm going to have a heart attack, or I'm going to be in a car crash. Never met one like that. But you know, you've got to prepare for it because if you don't prepare, when you do prepare, you can, you're proactive when it happens instead of being reactive and in a panic trying to find your way out of your home or find your children or your family if they're trapped in that home. If you just do simple, couple simple things, 
have a smoke detector and practice with a uh, fire drill in your home. Have a location to meet like the, the uh, mailbox out front. And this way, you, when the fire department shows up, you can tell them everybody's out. But you tell, even in the middle of the winter, you tell them, stand at that mailbox and don't go anywhere else. And something like this, something very simple like this could save your life or those of your family. You know, Dave, it's just such sage advice for everything uh, that's going on, you know, and, and of course, you know, on this channel, I talk a lot about tactics. I talk a lot about how to protect yourself from violence. But, you know, like you just said, it's much more likely that you're going to have a fire in your house. I find it interesting, though, the principles are still the same. Be proactive, be prepared, have a plan and practice your plan. Because if you think about, um, you, you know, the, the wildfires uh, that we just witnessed in, in, in Hawaii, um, you know, it's amazing to me that although they kind of thought they understood wildfires, those wildfires were upon them. Nobody dies in a wildfire unless they wait too long, right? And okay. they can't get away from it. Um, and, and so that emergency planning, even amongst law enforcement and fire out there, I think I think that was a, uh, a, a huge breakdown in communications and evacuations and all those kinds of things. And, and so, Dave, I noticed when we trained, we were just training in Los Angeles not too long ago. And Dave, you just brought just incredible advice in terms of medical preparations, in terms of weather preparations. And interestingly and not, I thought it was hilarious that, you know, we in, in our training curriculum together, you include, you know, hurricanes and earthquakes and both of those things happen in Los Angeles the week we got there. So you just don't get to pick when these things uh, happen. And I'm starting to get a lot of questions, um, even from other countries. Tim, tell me what kinds of things I should be doing with all that's going on um, in, in, in our crazy world. Uh, tell me the things that every family should think about. So I hand that question to you. You're the best I know. You have a choice when something bad happens. You can shelter or you can evacuate. If a tornado is bearing down on you, you need to shelter. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a basement, you have a good spot where you can go. You know, if you're in a mobile home or something above ground or you have no shelter, well, by all means, evacuate rapidly at a 90 degree angle if you know what direction the tornado is coming from. These tornadoes can have winds of two, 250, maybe even greater miles per hour and they will just destroy homes. You know, you've seen pictures of two by fours shot through trees, you know, two foot deep, uh, thick trees, and they're nothing to mess with. Um, and it's, it, it, tornadoes pick up all the debris and fly them. So you have all this debris, garbage, parts of homes and roofs traveling at 200, 250 miles an hour. And so, Shelter first if you need to do that, if you have a safe location, and then evacuate. And with that, you're going to lose power, too. And you right. need to have these plans in your head. You need to practice them beforehand. And when severe weather or floods come in, you're going to lose power. Now, is this during the summer or is this during the winter? When it's zero degrees out, um, you know, right. it's really cold. Um, or you know, severe uh, blizzards and that too. Are you prepared when there's a power outage? Do you have a generator? Do you have a battery backup? Do you have a fireplace? Do you have some spare water set aside? Do you have some food? Whatever that looks like, um, you know, what happens if there's an earthquake and you lose your natural gas? And mm -hmm. how are you going to stay warm? How are you going to cook food? You know, how are you going to protect and sustain your family? And when the power goes out, think about it. If it's a large storm, some of you are in hurricane prone areas or wildfires. And what happens when the power goes out? ATM machines don't work. Do you have cash? 
at home, you know, in a, a little safe or vault that you have. And, you know, because it's going to be a cash environment at that point. Credit cards don't work. Cell phones don't work. Think about it. And when cell phones and cell towers are overwhelmed, you might not get through on your cell phone. So you could use text messaging. Those are much shorter bursts of information, and you could shoot that out. And those many times will be able to get out. That's such great advice, Dave. Um, you know, I, I think of resources for people, ReadyGov. Um, what what are what would you recommend are the best resources that a family, mom, dad, you know, everybody could look at and go, oh, okay, this spells it out and uh, would be helpful? One of the undoubtedly best locations to get great information is ready.gov. And they, you can go to that site, you look on the left column, and they have specific information for every type of emergency or disaster you could think of. Great information on winter, summer storms, power outages, hazardous material situation, violence. Unfortunately, we're seeing a lot more civil violence mm -hmm. and disobedience. What happens if you happen to be caught in that kind of an area? And like I said, every type of fire, medical emergencies, um, they have some great information there. And they also have additional information on alerts and how to receive alerts on your phone. And what happens if you're separated with your family? But more importantly, the answer is not in a disaster here, um, you know, running around like a, your head cut off or chicken little. No, it's being prepared. Mm -hmm. And when you're prepared in advance, case in point, when you go into a restaurant and if you look around and you see a second exit, you have at least an 80 or greater percent chance of survival over everybody else in that restaurant because you found that second exit. Everyone else, if they didn't, they're going out the way they came in because it's a reflex. They're being reactive, not proactive. But if you found that second exit, you and your family could survive by doing something that simple. That's such good, great advice. I know we talk about the tactical aspects of sitting in a restaurant, back to the wall, facing, you know, the 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 doors. Um, but that second and third exit, you know, one of the things that you help me with as well, you know, if, if you're in a shopping mall or an isolated area and there's concentrated gunfire running into the stores, and out the back entrance. We're not programmed to think, oh, that's only for employees. And that's what happens in the crisis. So I, I think that's a great example and illustration of, hey, think beyond the norms. You know, uh, we talk about this with carjackings, you know, try to be left or right lane. And if somebody's going to attack you, don't worry about driving up on the sidewalks. You know, we think, no, we can't do that. Well, if, if you're going to die, uh, or up onto the curb and over the island, you know, there, we must think very, very differently, um, you know, based on what's going on. Dave, let me ask you, since you're an expert too, um, gas leaks, uh, it may be common sense, but if you begin to smell gas in an area, w what should you do? Well, if it's natural gas, natural gas will go up and mm. it's lighter than air. And first of all, Get everybody out of the building. Number mm -hmm. one, evacuate. A building can always be replaced. That's what right. we have insurance for. People can't. Wow. And you never want to be in an explosion. Burns are terrible. They're very painful and disfiguring. So evacuate everybody. Call 911 after you're out of the building. Don't flip any light switches because light switches have a little arc inside. Wow. And I was on many fires where as people smelled, the gas, whether it was propane or natural gas, and we see it on a regular basis on the news mm -hmm. where a house exploded. And you look at those houses, they're like toothpicks because it's a major explosion. And as people were going out, they flipped the switch to maybe turn the lights on for family members behind them. And that was the trigger, the ignition point wow. where the gas in the entire house blew up. Wow. So evacuate out. 
propane is heavier than air, so that's going to want to go down into low places. And so, and, you know, even gasoline is very explosive, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, the fumes will just cause an enormous explosion on that. So evacuate after you're out, call 911, and that's part of your evacuation plan. It should be a reflex action. It should be an action and not a reaction. Dave, that's such sound advice. And and literally, you are the best emergency planner I've ever met. Um, I, I know you've done it at such high level, state of Illinois level, and you've overseen operational plans. And um, I, I'm just very appreciative, folks. Dave and I, um, we travel and do what's called safe office training which is kind of the whole picture. It's um, not just, uh, you know, active violence, which we do, we include that, but we talk about these other things that you're actually far more likely to see. And here's what I know. If you're in a crisis, you either rise or fall to the level of your training. And so folks, this is a season in our nation where we must have great training. Because again, if you rise or fall, you don't want to fall. You don't want to be the victim. You don't want to be the person that needs rescuing. You want to be the person that knows what to do and can rescue others. So I hope this information's uh, very helpful to you. Uh, I'd encourage you to go to our website. Um, if you go to lionheartsecurityteam.com, lionheartsecurityteam altogether.com, you'll see um, you know exactly kind of what we offer and, and, and how to get in contact with us. Um, also on our YouTube channel, which uh, this is probably where you walk, are, are watching, um, you know, Lionheart protective or protection skills uh, at Lionheart protection skills on YouTube um, or at Lionheart skills on Twitter. Folks, I hope this information is helpful because at the end of the day, Dave and I have one passion and that's getting people prepared for the storm, really, that's already here. But I think we're going to see it get, get, get even worse in the days ahead. Let's not be that person that is unprepared and frozen. Let's be that person that is prepared and knows exactly what to do. Because remember, in those crisis periods, quarter seconds count. So, Dave, thank you, my friend, for your gracious time. Uh, I really have nothing but incredible respect for you and uh, am very appreciative that we get the team. We're going to be doing some training in the in the Richmond, D.C. area coming up. And um, just uh, if you would, guys, keep keep your uh, keep us in your prayers, because there's a lot of training that's needed, especially regarding active violence. Uh, organizations are becoming more and more concerned with what they see. And uh, again, we don't traffic in fear. That's not how we roll. We traffic in wisdom, preparation, and skill. Because if you have those three things, you're going to be in a good place should it ever happen. So hope and pray everybody stay safe. Dave, thank you again, my friend. And we'll talk next time for sure. Stay safe out there.